How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to Creepy Pastas. For today's reading, it's going to be a little different. There's going to be chat logs that are going to be popping up on screen. So, I mean, you could always listen to it, but I won't be reading them out. So, you might want to pay a little attention to uh, what's going on. But you'll be able to tell. You'll hear the the little Discord sound. So, uh, without further ado, let's get right into today's story. The first thing I should probably note is that I'm Lemon Lime School. In other words, that's my screen name up there. That was the first time I saw or heard from Funny Mouth, and for all intents and purposes, it should have been the last. Anyone who spent enough time chatting away knows that weirdos come and go. Folks pop in to ask insane questions or just to troll a populated channel. What first struck me odd is about the Funny Mouth guy, however, was the fact that he came and went with no particular goal. He didn't try to piss anyone off, and he didn't ask anyone on the channel if he knew how to fix his computer or remove a virus. He just stuck his head in, rattled off some random text, and happily fucked off. I don't know what results I expected from following this guy to another channel. I'm not the type that goes out of his way to annoy or argue with people. I'll usually avoid it at all costs, though, once someone starts with me. I don't mind getting into it at that point. I guess what I'm saying is, I have no idea why I pursued this. He was sitting there, in the channel by himself. I actually chuckled out loud at this point. He was weird and inoffensive. And with that, I left. The act got old fast, and I felt this was either someone trying too hard or a legitimate moron who was unaware how to properly use a chat program. I mean, sitting idly by yourself and popping into other channels for a split second seemed like a desperate bid for attention. I might have done that and laughed my ass off in or around the 90s, but yeah, pretty fucking stupid. Silence dominated the channel for about a half hour as I minimized the window and went about my business. Nothing. Eight users in the channel and not a single one active. It took me a few seconds to see it. Funny mouth again. Staring again. I physically slumped my shoulders with a not this shit again sigh. Then I noticed he wasn't in the channel. Obviously, it was a glitch with either my client or the server. The message was kicked up from earlier in the night, at random. These things happen. Still, it creeped the hell out of me. After a few minutes of sitting there with a really cold, creepy feeling in my stomach, that I shouldn't have done something feeling, I decided to stop trying and to brave it out and just close the entire chat program. Sure, I could have just hung out like everything was fine, but why bother to try to prove I wasn't spooked? Hell, nobody was even around to see me slink anyway. After a few more hours of screwing around on the web, I went to bed around 2.40 a.m. One thing I've always prided myself on is that I do not have nightmares, at least not regularly. Usually, if there are monsters or ghosts or nuclear wars in my dream, I get to control it and I have a great time. I'm shooting zombies in the face, outright telling ghosts they're not real while I laugh at them. And if there's some disaster, I always know how to get to the safe spot while every other motherfucker fries. I've had maybe four actual nightmares in the past 10 years, and yes, I'm completely serious. The first nightmare of my adult life was in 2005. I'd just broken off a relationship with someone who had been with someone else for over a year behind my back. That night, when I finally did get to sleep, I dreamt she was strapped down to a medical table while some sort of unseen, inexplicable creature sucked her brain out through an organic machine. The brain screamed, ceaselessly. The second nightmare had me visiting a medical facility where they were experimenting with new methods of saving lives. There is a fantastic tour of this high-tech facility, lots of wonders of modern science, people in lab coats, etc. Then I was led to a room where three car crash victims had been saved by their techniques. This included a slowly rocking young girl whose face had been completely distended and hung around her chest 
and a woman who was nothing but a cluster of twitching severed limbs, all held together by a drawn out kite like span of flesh. The third came soon after the second. I was being accosted by two people, one who wanted to insult me to no end, and the other who kept trying to pinch and tweak me in absurdly ineffective ways. Thinking I can control this dream like others, I set the two men against each other, thinking it would be a sort of poetic justice. Instead, the pincher became increasingly violent until he was pulling at the other's cheeks, grabbing his tongue with his fist and fiercely pulling at it until it came out. Then he pulled the fellow's eyelids until they distended in some sort of grotesque prolapse. I suppose what I'm getting at is, even when I did have nightmares, I was never the actual target of any sort of horror. It's always been a kind of empathetic horror related to someone else getting brutalized. This night, however, was different. As soon as I fell asleep, I started dreaming. Basically, it was a recurring dream I'm having where I'm in the woods, just checking out animals and birds and generally just acting chill. I lie in the grass and look up at the sky. It's always a dream I welcome, but even if I've had a shit day, I'll wake up happy and ready to start over. This time, the script changed. I laid in the grass, but while I was staring at the sky, I felt something odd. It was a cold, squirming feeling on my neck. In the dream, I reached to my neck and pulled away a long, writhing earthworm. Earthworms disgust me. If I see one in the yard, I'll specifically get a shovel and heap dirt over it simply so I don't see it again. Disgusted, but more or less content, I flung the worm aside and continued my dream. Then, that feeling again. Clammy, wet, wiggling against the side of my neck. I pulled another worm away. Again, it happened. The third time, the feeling of confusion and dread became so overwhelming that I immediately snapped myself out of the dream. That's what usually happens when shit gets real in my dreams. Game over. I figured it out though. At least I thought I had. In the waking world, I felt my neck and discovered a slick, slimy film on my skin. Logic dictated that I must have been drooling in my sleep. Nothing to be proud of, but not exactly terrifying either. My dreaming mind must have translated the icky feeling into an appropriate creature in the forest dream. Perhaps more unsettling, though, was the fact that the bed around me seemed to have indentations. Four to be exact. It was almost as if someone on hands and knees had been hovering over me as I slept. There was any number of reasons that could have happened. But then, from that night on, I slept very lightly. Any little thing, like the sound of a ceiling fan, would wake me up straight away. I had no real interest in going back into the woods that night. When morning came around, I got ready to take off, to get out the house and shake the cobwebs out. I only planned to check my email real quick to make sure I didn't have any pending transactions or questions I had to answer. Surprise! From funnymouth at blood.com, Saturday, November 17th, 2012 at 2.42am to Charles Watts. I had a good time to talk to you. It could be fun again. You'll see what. I don't like. Stop it. As you recall, I hadn't given this asshat my email address. However, logical answer someone else on the channel must have. He obviously came back to refer sales and asked someone who I was, and that douchebag completely betrayed me, knowing I don't give out my personal contact info. Although, the email was dated at 2.40. That was pretty much the exact moment I went to bed, when everyone on the channel was still idle. Even though I well and truly knew I was taking some sort of bait, I responded. From Charles Watts, Saturday, November 17th, 2012 at 9.29am to funnymouth at blood.com Um, yeah bro, not exactly sure I want you emailing me. It was clear and straight to the point. There was no mistaking the message I was sending. And though it was snippy, I wasn't goading him into replying by starting a flame war. But of course... From funnymouth at blood.com, Saturday, November 17th, 2012, at 9.30 a.m. To Charles Watts. Come on, don't be so sad about it. I know you like it. We will have a lot of fun of the time. It's okay, even. And with that, I blocked his address. Really, I should have done that in the first place, but I still had some sick sort of interest in exactly where this was going. Maybe if I put my foot down, he would admit he was just screwing around and calling me a humorless wet blanket. When I saw that it was just the same old bullshit, that gave me the green light to go ahead and shut the guy out. For what it's worth, you could relax at this point. The blocking stuck. There was no follow-up message circumventing the ban. 
After a few minutes, I assured myself that it was all over and I went about my day. It wasn't until I got home at dusk that the cold, squirming feeling in my stomach started all over again. And I had no idea why. Well, that's not entirely true. I had some idea. I checked my email. Nothing from Funny Mel. However, there was an email from Jorge. Jorge G. Ghost Jorge at ReferSales.com Saturday, November 17th. I let out a string of curses. Downtime meant lost sales, and I'd been out all day with no way for Jorge to contact me. If I'd been a little less strict with my personal info, he could have just called me. I loaded the site and waited for some sort of error screen. Instead, it began to reroute to another page. Blood.com Then, Jorge emailed me a screenshot of the site giving a 404 error, along with a coming soon notice for blood.com. He could have easily faked them, but why? I mean, if this was some sort of joke, it was pretty abstract and I didn't get it. When I looked at my website files, everything was normal. Nothing was out of place and nobody had even logged in to change anything. I checked the domain's names, name servers. The thing that routes a domain where it's supposed to go and nothing was out of sorts. Still, there was this bloated, tongue-wagging face looking back at me with its empty eye sockets. Then, I don't know how I missed it in the first place. Looking closely, the picture of that face wasn't really pixelated. It was made of tiny letters, HTML code coloring each letter specific to the image. Over and over again, the word that made up the image was right in front of me. Funny mouth, funny mouth, funny mouth, funny mouth and a great cluster of nonsense. I felt like spitting at the screen. I unblocked his email address and set about writing an incredibly profane and threatening letter. I didn't really care if I got the site back at this point. I just wanted to get everything off my chest so I could feel like I was in control of the situation again. Before I could finish the letter, I just got this weird, creepy feeling again. That, no, it couldn't be feeling where you know you're being absurd but at the same time you know you're right. I stopped hacking out my death threats and checked the inbox. Not only was that feeling correct, the feeling that he had already emailed me the minute I unblocked him, but it seemed he had steadily been emailing me non-stop since I blocked him. Ten more letters arrived just within the time span it took me to reply. Fucking stop. I was getting a stress headache, my heart was pounding. Not from fear, but rage. This was probably the most absurdly infuriating person on the internet. And that's saying a lot. Thankfully, the string of letters did indeed stop. I tried to calm myself down, breathing deeply, but it didn't seem to take. I was still incredibly pissed. Slowly and methodically, I sent him another note. I waited. I thought about how I'd conquered my anger, and that this measured response was really the best way to go about it. This fellow would understand what I meant, and he'd realize he made the mistake. I calmed down, and everything was going to be okay. Then, I hit the roof. I hit the goddamn roof and it went clear through it. I smacked the monitor with my palm, knocking it clear off the desk. That pissed me off even more. 
as I drove my fist into the keyboard repeatedly until the keys flew free. I screamed out in a mixture of frustration with myself and rage over the situation and stormed out of the room, knocking down anything and everything I can get my hands on. For as long as I could manage the energy, I laid waste to my own shit. I would have started a fire and burned the fucking place down if I had a lighter on hand. That night, I stared at the ceiling for what felt like an eternity before sleep came. Waiting for sleep, I knew I was going to have a nightmare. I just knew it. That was how my luck was going. Imagine how surprised I was, even in sleep, when instead of some horrific setting, I was someplace safe. The woods. I laid in the grass again. I felt the relaxation. I knew even my subconscious knew that everything would be okay. No matter what setbacks life threw at me, the world would go on. Nothing was permanent. Everything was in transition. Nobody could really get to me. I felt the squirming against my neck. Nope. No dice. Nothing could spoil this right now. I ignored the worm. It would go away. I felt the squirming move to my mouth. Now, I couldn't will myself awake. Every other time, I'd been able to decide when to wake up, but it seemed like the opportunity had now passed. Then, it wasn't a worm. It was a finger. Then another. Then more, until four slimy squirming digits were locked around my teeth, clutching my lower jaw. It didn't hurt when it happened. It was just sort of like a pop, more pressure than pain. It was quick and before I even knew what was going on, it was over. I then managed to force myself awake. I sat up and got to my feet in complete darkness. Feeling my way around the walls, I made my way into the bathroom. There, I finally flicked a light switch. I stood before the mirror, rubbing my eyes, the harsh light blinded me. I stared into the mirror for minutes on end with no reaction. No feelings, no thoughts. Then I smiled. I smiled as best as I could, now that my jaw was completely broken, hanging loose around my neck. My tongue rolled out listlessly like a paralyzed gooey slug. My teeth weren't rooted in anything but threads of flesh, and I could pull them out by hand with about the same discomfort as a needle prick. I laughed, the halting sound coming out like the gurgle of a backed up sewer drain. What a handsome face. What a funny mouth. A funny mouth. A funny mouth. Funny mouth. Funny mouth. Well, that was it. Funny mouth. What do I think? It's pretty good, to be honest with you. But I feel like I say that about a lot of creepypastas. But I mean, this one's a classic. What could you not like about it? It's got the chat logs, got the suspense, and the ending. Was this guy the image that he's seen? Or did he get turned into a funny mouthed creature? I don't know. I guess I won't know. Maybe you might have a better interpretation. Let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Lost Disciple, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.